Okay, so we're here at AWS, so Amazon Web Services, and we're going to create a, an instance of an Ubuntu server, so a Linux server, uh, which we're going to be using as a web server in our case, um, but you could use this for anything. Um, we've already signed up for a free tier account, so we're going to jump right into creating the instance. So we're here at aws.amazon.com. And we're going to go to my account and then AWS Management Console. And we're going to go ahead and log in. Okay, so here we go. And uh, this is the kind of the landing page. What we're going to do is we could go into the services and then to EC2 uh, or EC2 here. Um, but the easiest way to do it is to just click right here, launch a virtual machine. And we're going to go ahead and choose to use the EC2 instance on the left here instead of LightSail. LightSail might be a better option if you're actually going to pay for it, but we're on the uh, free tier. We're going to click get started. And we're just going to call this web server. Okay, so um, I'm sure there are really great reasons to use Amazon Linux, Red Hat Linux, uh, SUS Linux. Um, for our purposes, though, Ubuntu um, is what we are going to use. So let's go ahead and use Ubuntu. We're going to click it and click Next. Okay, so the micro instance is already uh, selected, it's free tier eligible, so that's kind of what we want. So we go ahead and click Next. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and create a key pair. So initially, the, um, the most secure way to log into a web server is by using what they call a key. And all that is, it's a file with a very long password inside of it. That's basically what it is. A password that's so long that it's impossible to break and we call that string you know that that series of letters and numbers and symbols we call that the key right okay so we're gonna go ahead and download and download that and it says hey we don't keep a copy of a private key you better make sure you hang on to it and that's exactly what we're gonna do so we go okay start download okay and we get this web server .pem. File. So we're going to go ahead and save this uh, file. So it went to my downloads folder here. So it's this PEM. We're going to head, go ahead and cut it. And then on my desktop, I just went ahead and created a project folder. So this way, you know, I can, uh, I can make sure that everything's kept in one place. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that you have some folder, right? There we go. For some reason, the desktop didn't update here on Windows 10. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have AWS folder there on the desktop, and we have our web server.pem inside of it. Okay, so let's go back, and we're going to go ahead and create the instance now. Okay, so my instance is launching here. And notice, they give you kind of a good hint, right? So managing your instance... Uh, connecting to your instance and securing your instance. So, so your instance uh, instance right now, it says that my current IP address is this, right? And basically, what it's saying here is, hey, to protect your instance, we've configured security group your security group to only accept connections from your current IP. Okay, now that's a problem because if I were to move to a different computer or a different location, my IP is likely going to change. Uh, so the very first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and um, and now that I have this instance up and running, so I have a computer, an, o, an operating system, you know, Linux operating system, operating online. Uh, and I want to go ahead and configure the security group. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And the security group is going to open. And notice it's of the same name here. Okay, when I highlight it, when I select on the list, notice that it highlights 
uh, down below. And now we're gonna take a look at the rules. So essentially what we're doing is this, they call it a security group here. Basically it's a, it's a set of firewall settings that you can set up and then share among your web servers. So if you want all your web servers to have the same security settings, Basically, that's what a security group is. It's a, it's a set of common settings you can apply to many computers. So we're gonna click inbound here. And notice that it says SSH, that's the type, you know, that's the, we're gonna use an SSH client to get into the web server, right? To do our work on the web server, a lot of it. Protocol is TCP, port is 22. And then the source, notice that right now, it gives the sources just one uh, IP address. So we want to go ahead and edit this. And we want the source so to be from anywhere. Okay, and we want to go ahead and click save. So now, instead of just being allowed from a single IP address, we can SSH into the server from any IP address. Okay, and then outbound, of course, it allows all traffic from the server out uh, to any address. Okay, so that is the security setup here. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect to our instance. So that's the next thing. So to really know that we have a computer up and running, uh, we need to go ahead and connect to that instance. So we're gonna go ahead and, um, and we're gonna to go to the EC2 console, right? Okay, but instead of using this link, I'm just gonna show you where it is in the menuing system. So we go under services and then EC2. Okay, and then notice that it says the instances right here. So on the left, we have events, tags, reports, limits, and then we have instances, and we can just click right there. Okay, so here's my web server that I just made. And I can click that. And notice that it gives me a lot of information running, the instance type, the availability zone. Um, and then you notice over here, it says 18, 26, 78, 53. And so that is the public IP of of the computer that I got, uh, that I have up and running. Okay, so we want to get a get access to this computer. So we want to be able to run commands and go ahead and set up our web server on this on this computer that's now connected to the internet at that IP address. So to do that in uh, in Linux on on a regular computer, we would. <laughs> uh, if you've been working uh, in this area a while, a regular computer is a Linux computer. So if you're not on a Windows or Mac computer, basically you just open a console and you'd SSH right into this. Um, however, uh, since we're using PuTTY, we're gonna go ahead and need to do a little couple of extra setups here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna search on PuTTY, okay? And we actually don't, we can't use PuTTY directly because we downloaded a PEM file. Our key is in that PEM format. Remember, so it says .PEM. Um, so PuTTY actually doesn't understand PEM files. So PuTTY only understands what are called PPK files. So we need to use this key generator here. So, so once again, it's a, you, you, know, you type in PuTTY and we wanna launch this putty gen, okay, P-U-T-T-Y-G-E-N, putty gen. Now how we're going to do this is we're gonna go ahead and click uh, load, and then we're gonna go find our PEM file. Okay, notice that it defaults. I went to the folder that's in, see it's on my desktop, it's called AWS right here, okay. Um, and I need to go ahead and select all files and then click on the PE. PEM file we downloaded and then click open. Okay. We're just going to go ahead and click OK and then we're going to click save private key and click yes. Okay, we're going to name it the exact same thing. It warns us that we didn't give it a password, which is fine. And then we're just going to go ahead and save it. Okay, so there we have it. There's our PPK file. Um, notice that on my computer, it's not showing me some, uh, like on this, it's a known file, so it's hiding the file type there. We actually wanna have that show, show us this. This is a relatively new computer, so I'm just gonna go, uh, we're, we just did this in Windows 10 now. 
We can just do this checkbox file name extensions. We click that and it will now show us the file extensions. Okay, so we generated our PPK file. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and launch PuTTY. So PuTTY Gen is done. We're going to go ahead and close that. And then we're going to go ahead and launch PuTTY. So um, in my case, when I installed it, I had it uh, you know, at a shortcut on the desktop here. So I'm going to double click that. Okay, now we need a couple pieces of information. So a lot of the settings that we're going to do here are on the front page. So basically, all I, what I need to connect is I need the IP address of the computer I'm connecting to you know, the server we just made. And we also need the public IP of this. So that's the public IP right here. And then we also need that um, key file because that is our password. So we're gonna go ahead and paste in our public IP. We have port 22. And then on the left here, on the left here, we go under SSH and go under auth, okay, for authorization. And we're going to go ahead and browse, and we're going to go find that PPK file. So we're going to, I click desktop, AWS, and we go get that PPK file and select it. Okay. Now I know that I'm going to want to do this more often, so I'm going to call this, you know, some, some name here, and we're actually going to save this session. So we just click save. And this way when I come back, I don't have to type in all of this stuff again whenever I want to get back onto my web server. Okay, so let's go ahead and click open. And notice when we first start, what happens is, is PuTTY downloads uh, the, the um, key from the server. It's another key in this key pair we had. And PuTTY says, hey, do you want me to download this? And we say, yes, we do. Okay, so now we're connected and we're actually logging in to our web server. So we're at, notice how PuTTY says we're at 18, 20, 216-7853, and we're going to log in with the username. This, the default username on AWS Ubuntu is Ubuntu. Okay, we're going to click enter, and there we have it. Okay, so notice that we are at Ubuntu, and then at, and notice we have an IP address here, and let's see, and it should match. Notice that this, uh, the, the private IP address here is uh, 172.31.20.118. And notice that that's exactly what it's saying, right? So, so the name of this is the same as the name I'm logged into. And the username here is Ubuntu. Okay, so that is how to create an instance on Amazon Web Services on EC2 and then connect to it from a Windows computer using PuTTY. Easy as that. Uh, best of luck.